Hello, welcome to uh, a short video I wanted to produce uh, in case anybody was wondering if the sine wave and unit circle were independent of each other or were they even related in one in any way. And the, the point of this video is to show that the unit circle and the sine wave are definitely linked. Uh, they, uh, the unit circle actually produces the sine wave. Uh, and that they are perfectly balanced as all things should be. Okay, so let's take a look here. We're talking about the sine wave, okay? So if you look at my equation I've got, I've got y equals sine x, where the amplitude is 1, that's the coefficient, and since the coefficient of x is 1, then the period is 2 pi, okay? So if you're thinking about the sine wave, you know that it's going to go up to a height of 1, starting at the origin, come down to a depth of negative 1, and complete one cycle by the time it reaches 2 pi. That's the sine wave, okay? Now, how is that related to the unit circle? Well, remember in the unit circle, the equation for sine, it says y equals sine theta. So in this case, the equation for the unit circle is really similar to the equation for the sine wave, where x and theta are basically the same variable. They just represent the angle, okay? Let's take a walk around the unit circle and see how the sine wave is actually produced from the unit circle, okay? So the first point we have is 0, 0. And if you remember, sine theta is y, so at zero degrees, our y value is zero. So that's how we get the ordered pair zero, zero. And then you just increase in value going around the unit circle, okay? So at pi over six for theta, remember that's my x, the y value is a half, and that gets us the next ordered pair. At pi over six, we're at a half, at pi over 4, we're at square root of 2 over 2. And in my graph here, 0 0.707 is the approximation of square root of 2 over 2. And we keep going. Pi over 3, 0.866 is the decimal approximation of square root of 3 over 2, is our next point. And then when we get to 90 degrees, we're at a height of 1. So that's this point up here at the peak at 90, which is pi over 2. We reach our maximum height of 1. And as you can see, going around the unit circle, the uh, starting point for y is 0, and the maximum that y can be is 1. All of these other values are less than 1, but they're increasing up to 1. And then as you go down, they decrease until you get back to zero, okay? So if we keep going around the unit circle, at two pi over three, again, we're gonna hit, we're starting to go back down. And at three pi over four, and at five pi over six, we keep decreasing until we get to pi, where we're back at zero, okay? Now look at what happens to the y values if you keep going. At 7 pi over 6, now our y is negative, okay? So if, you're, if you were ever wondering why does this go below the x-axis, it's because if you're in the unit circle, now we're in the third quadrant where your y's are always negative until you get to a maximum depth of negative 1. That is the smallest value that your y can ever be, okay? So these decrease, they're decreasing, decreasing, decreasing until you get to the smallest y at negative 1 here at 3 pi over 2. And then notice what happens is your y's start to increase again until they get back to 0. So at 5 pi over 3, Again, that's the decimal equivalent of negative square root of 3 over 2. We're increasing, increasing, increasing until we reach 
a full circle, we're to two pi, we get back to zero. So do you see that as you walk around the unit circle, as your theta increases, which corresponds on the uh, XY coordinate system, that's your X value, as your X increases, your Y values correspond to your unit circle values, okay? And that is how the sine wave is produced from the unit circle. They're inextricably linked, okay? Perfectly balanced, as all things should be. So I hope that was informative. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to put those in the comment section below, or you can text me. And thanks for watching.